My name is uh, Lex uh, Guy Chamberlain, and we're here in uh, Moki Cave. It's a cave that my parents uh, purchased back in the uh, 50s from a local rancher. And the reason why they purchased the cave, uh, in 1952, they opened this uh, up as one of the first dance hall and taverns in this part of southern Utah. And folks from the small communities around our area here, they would come in and uh, belly up to the bars and get a cold one and take the drinks and go back in the very back of the cave and dance the night away. And that went on for 25 years and then after 25 years my uh, parents decided it was time to change so they've turned it into a world-class museum of items that they collected over 60 years of collecting throughout their travels throughout the world and what we have inside the cave we have one of the largest fluorescent mineral displays in the United States. These are rocks that are fluorescent and they're a long wave, short wave ultraviolet light that they collected. Uh, my father in uh, college has studied uh, archaeology, uh, paleontology, and dabbled in mineralogy. So we have these fluorescent minerals. We also have about 180 dinosaur tracks that uh, my folks found uh, going from Kanab to Page, beautiful Vermilion Cliffs above the city of Kanab. And that tells me that the uh, earth at that time had to have been soft mud for these huge creatures to leave their imprint. And then we have a museum of Moki artifacts. Moki was the tribe that lived and dwelt in our area. And today they, they no longer call themselves Moki, they call themselves Hopi. And the Hopi tribe is still alive today down in uh, central uh, Arizona. My father Garth uh, Chamberlain, the first bar he made was stones that he found locally around our area. He had his own lapidary shop in, behind our home there in Kanab, and he cut and polished all the rocks. And that first bar was stones, like I said, from our area. And in the backlit bar behind the first bar, they collected the stones and when they went to Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico. And then the second bar uh, that's in the museum has stones from 14 different countries. And that countertop has beautiful mosaic work in it. The other thing that happened here in the 60s, they filmed over 200 Western movies here in Kanab. There were movie sets. We had a Ford out west of Kanab, and then out east we had uh, up Johnson Canyon, the, the Gunsmoke movie set, and then uh, further east to Kanab, about 30, 40 miles, is the old Perea movie set. And, and, and the Hollywood would come in every summer. They would film in the morning in our beautiful neighborhood, and in the afternoon, this is where the actors and actresses belly up to the bars that my dad built that you'll see inside. My heroes was uh, the Tonto, Jay Silverheel, he was from Canada, and um, Clayton Moore, the Lone Ranger. And when they would come in the afternoon, not once did the Lone Ranger, Clayton Moore, take his mask off. He kept his mask on the whole time, which I thought was pretty cool. And he had his silver bullets. The Lone Ranger's horse was named Hi-Ho Silver, and Jay Silverheel's horse was named Patches. But um, that was a big deal, because people here in the small town could earn more money working for the movies than they could their regular jobs. We have uh, Native American pottery from the Dene tribe. We, we say Navajo, but among themselves, they call themselves Dene, which means the people. And the Navajos originally from uh, Western Canada. They came from Canada. And so we have the Dene tribe, uh, sand paintings, and also the pottery. And, uh, and then we have the jewelry, the turquoise jewelry made by the Navajo, Hopi, and Zuni tribe. Beautiful uh, work they did. If you want to find us, visit our website and our Facebook page. Thank you very much. So my dad, he uh, have, didn't have a football team as he's growing up here. So my grandparents, Guy and Vera Chamberlain, shipped him up to Draper, south end of Salt Lake City, and he stayed with his grandfather, Jonathan Heaton. We have Heaton blood in us. And uh, he um, tells the story that he played in the first football game that he ever saw at Jordan High School. And Snide Taylor was his football coach there at the high school. And, about the third quarter, they're playing the Davis Darts, 
team from Salt Lake, and um, they put him in the third quarter, and the ball carrier was running down their sideline, and the ball carrier crossed the goal line, scored the touchdown. My dad continued his pursuit, hit the ball carrier, broke his right arm, the ball carrier's right arm. The referee kicked my dad out of the game for unnecessary roughness. So they had to call timeout. They have to go off the field, and Snide Taylor, who swore a lot, he said, Garth, what in the blah, blah, blah did you do that for? And my dad says, well, no, he didn't score a touchdown. And Snide says, well, the blah, 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 he didn't, Garth. And he said, no, coach, he didn't run underneath the uprights. There was the H uprights. Nobody ever told him he had to go across the goal line. Well, he got a full ride scholarship to Brigham Young University. And then after he graduated from BYU, he played two years for the Rooney family, for the Steelers, made $450 a game. Then he comes back and plays two years for the Salt Lake Seagulls. Salt Lake had a semi-pro team. But um, we um, give tours through the, the cave and try to answer um, any of the questions about our beautiful surroundings. Um, we live in, uh, you know, in between Bryce and Zion and the north end of the Grand Canyon. And then out east of Canaan, out east of us, we have that beautiful swimming pool, uh, Lake Powell where we used to go as youth and jump off the cliffs. <laughs>